Okay, let's get started. Hey, thanks, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Harford. I am a Vice President of Business Intelligence Products with Potomac Wave Consulting. Uh, I presume uh, most of you have been uh, participated in a Fed Data Check weekly webinar before. Uh, Fed Data Check is a product we've created focusing on federal procurement metrics. Uh, a couple areas that we get involved with is uh, FPDSNG data quality and uh, coding in FPDSNG relative to, relative to federal acquisition regulations. Uh, for example, our next two webinars are going to be on hub zone sole source awards and uh, the corresponding range of uh, acceptable base and all options value and the fair opportunity limited sources field. Anyway, hopefully uh, uh, you've been on these webinars before and uh, know something about Fed Data Check and Potomac Wave. But today uh, we have uh, very pleased to have uh, a guest presenters from the National Contract Management Association. Um, our involvement, Potomac Wave's involvement with the NCMA is we rent a booth at the NCMA World Congress every year. That's a great event. Uh, happens yearly in the summer. Uh, this year it's in Cleveland. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that. I'm sure uh, they're going to talk about that today. And uh, what else? I'm an NCMA member. Uh, I've gone on and they have a platform called Collaborate where you can post questions about the FAR uh, and uh, other contracting questions and you have experts answer them for free. It's worked out great for me. Uh, and I think I've hopefully contributed to one or two threads as well. Okay, with that, other, oh, by the way, other than that, I, you know, uh, we're, we're pleased to recommend NCMA and membership in the organization uh, other, than, other than what I mentioned, us running a booth and some uh, members on our end where, uh, you know, that's the extent of our affiliation with NCMA. Okay, so with us, who will be doing the presentation today? Uh, uh, Dr. John Wilkinson. He's the Chief of Standards and Certification Officer with the NCMA. And uh, Lucy Blodgett, she's the Membership and Chapter Relations Team Lead. So with that, John, uh, if you're on the, uh, get, I'm going to turn it over to you and listen in as well. Okay, sounds great, Bob. Thank you very much. And uh, this is a tremendous honor for me to, to be with you today. Uh, I, I have to warn you, I am an NCMA enthusiast. I uh, started off as a volunteer many years ago, was a chapter president. Uh, eventually came on to the NCMA staff. Then I went out to do my own business as a uh, consultant uh, where NCMA was my best client. And now I'm, I have returned to the staff and NCMA has a lot of great initiatives going on. Uh, if you're not an NCMA member, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, I'm not here to try to strong arm you into becoming an NCMA member, but I want to show you what uh, opportunities are available to you. And if you are already an NCMA member, I want to hopefully solidify, uh, reinforce your decision to be with the NCMA and to stay with NCMA. And just the uh, subtitle on this slide, Connecting, Learning, and Advancing in Contract Management. Uh, any, of those, any of you who have been around contract management for a while know that this is a career field that is not for the faint of heart. And there are people all over uh, the, the world in this career field who really, believe it or not, have the same problems you have. And the way a lot of them resolve their problems is by, in this first word here, connecting. Connecting with other people so they can learn and they can advance, so they can develop their competence in the career field, so they can get so good at what they do that nothing is impossible to, to get done. And it's just amazing how people are so willing to share their information and to help make you better at your job. All you do, all you have to do a lot of times is just ask. And you see these people sitting in these chairs. Uh, th this picture happened to be taken at our World Congress last July in Chicago. Specifically, this was at the Navy Pier, for any of you uh, familiar with Chicago. Uh, but this is our major event. And these people right here, and there were... Uh, well over a thousand people in this room. 
And so they were able to sit there and listen and then go on to other breakout sessions and learn from one another. I think they probably learned more from one another than they did the instructors or the speakers. So uh, just being with each other is, is a huge event. So uh, anyway, we're going to walk through and, and I'm going to go through some of the things that NCMA is doing. Uh, hopefully they will fit your professional development needs. If they don't, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, customize a lot of things that we offer to help you in your development. If you, if we don't get to your questions or later on you, you think of something you might want to ask, on the last slide will be my contact information, my email, my phone number. Feel free to copy those down or contact Bob or go onto the NCMA website, track me down and, uh, and ask me anything you want. I'll be able to uh, help you. Or, or if I can't, I know a lot of smart people who can. Okay. And I'm having trouble advancing the slides already. Well, while you're working on that, uh, Lu Lucy, uh, Blodgett, if you're on there, I see that um, we got a question here. Is Are there different levels of NCMA membership? Great question. Um, thank you, Ethan. There, there are different kinds of memberships available. You're either going to be an individual member or part of a group membership. And the individual membership, the regular rate is $150. Um, we do also offer a special rate for current students or retirees or new professionals who are 33 and under. And those are slightly discounted memberships. Um, and the group memberships are discounted based on how many members you have. So if your company or your organization has more than 10 people, they want to be NCMA members, there's a, a discount for that. Thanks. Uh, yeah, had some, what? Had some had some feedback there, but okay, John. It, it looks like you got to the next slide. Turn it back over yeah, to you. It, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, actually, it sounded like uh, we were at the Navy Pier with the yeah. with the uh, <laughs> boat going off in the back there. Okay, uh, NCMA's mission uh, again. We we want to advance the contract management profession. Uh, that is all great, but the way we do it, when you read through this, is we do it through NCMA members. We make that connection with NCMA members to enable their professional development. So we make the, we advance the contract management pre pre profession by enabling the professional development of our members. And that's something we take great pride in. You know, there's the, the age-old question of what comes first, the mission or the people. Well, uh, to me, it's always the mission first, but it's people always. And we always keep that in mind that we are developing people and people develop the organizations and the uh, career field. Now our value proposition, and you're gonna hear this as a constant theme throughout this hour, is uh, our strength lies in the people who comprise our membership. And we cover everything from government, industry, academia, uh, even we have non other nonprofits who are uh, members of NCMA. And here's a, a breakdown. Uh, typically in this career field, you're either a buyer or a seller. And you can see here that we have about 42.5% of people who are government contractors, that they're sellers. And then down here in the uh, gold pie slice, you know, about well, just under a third are actually uh, government people, but the, the buyers. So we, we have a, a wide range. Of, so we do tend to lead, there are more uh, sellers than buyers in NCMA. But the, but the value proposition is that we don't keep them separated. We bring them together into a neutral forum where they can actually discuss items. You know, of course, we don't want anybody to give away trade secrets or anything uh, like that. But it's just amazing how people are willing to help each other. You know, I've seen people from Lockheed sitting with people from Boeing willing to trade information. And, uh, and really help one another. 
And so by that, they're actually helping their competitors become better, you know, if you uh, believe that or not. Um, so, and, and let me uh, quickly ask you a question. I want to uh, poll you real quick, if I can get this thing going. Uh, John, I, I just launched the poll for, uh, are you a buyer okay. or a seller? Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll look at this. So we've got it going. So yeah, I'm kind of curious. Looks like we have a lot of buyers. Hey John, I did want to jump in one thing here. We, uh, as you know from our emails, we offer. Uh, well, you can get consent, continuous learning points, CLP points, by attending the Fed Data Check weekly webinars. Two things though: answer the polls, please. Uh, we have to demonstrate that to our agency points of contact that people participated in the webinar. So please answer the polls and keep the go-to webinars on your main screen. So those are two things we, it's a long story, but if you can do that, if you got two street screens, keep it on your primary screen and, and answer the polls. It, it's going to help us out in, in generating uh, the training certificates for the CLP points. Okay. That's my last comment, John. <clears throat> uh, well, and, and, and that's a great point because uh, it, uh, a lot of people sit through these and they that's all they do they, they don't pay attention this this way it if you're interested in uh, continuous learning and getting credit for it this is uh, one means of making sure that this CLP is worth something so, okay so it looks like we're about uh, 85 percent buyer and uh, three percent seller of course I know some of you if you are a subcontractor you could actually be both so, okay, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of that. Okay, so again, getting into uh, connections, your network and things you can do there. Uh, here's a fine looking gentleman, uh, Dave Gregan. Uh, he, he is uh, currently on our uh, board of directors. He's the senior procurement executive at the uh, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. But Dave makes a great point where he says, through active involvement in NCMA, you're going to surround yourself with experts everywhere. And so he just reinforces what I was trying to, to tell you earlier, and that just by being with other people, you're going to strengthen your network. And, and uh, if you ever have an issue or, or you need some help, you know, you're going to have those connections where you can reach out. Dave was also... Uh, He's heavily involved in uh, state uh, uh, procurement. He, he was in charge of the state of Texas procurement office, and he was also in charge of the uh, District of Columbia office of uh, contracting and procurement. So, uh, and if you want to even go back further, Dave uh, was in the Marine Corps in his younger days. And uh, something that we recently started up is Collaborate, and we're quite proud of this. This is an online community, and it's exclusively for NCMA members, a great member benefit, uh, where there are a lot of topics that come up, I mean, that range uh, all across everything you might be interested in. And there are a lot of things that you might not be interested in, but you didn't even know, may not even know exist. Uh, I get a, a daily feed on the conversations going out there and and this morning the the topics in from the digest include uh, the first one was DOD 5000 and the FAR changes to make acquisition more agile the next one was CPCM exam source next was commercial sales with Russia next was uh, first tier sub SAM registrations and uh, the last one was federal government contractor acquiring another federal government contractor and again, it's just amazing how people are just willing to help one another out with their issues. Any kind of question you may have about the profession, how to do your business, how to enhance your professional development, people put it out there and people from all around the world contribute to this. So it's just been an amazing feature. We're very proud of it. Uh, down here you see coming soon we're going to be listing volunteer opportunities uh, a lot of you are want to volunteer but you don't know how well through collaborate we're going to be offering 
it's almost like a, a job ad kind of thing. We need your help doing this or that. You know, participate in a working group or, or something that hopefully will, will match your, your uh, availability and, and your expertise. Or even if you don't have the expertise, sometimes it's a matter of just diving in and helping out. Also, we're going to be getting into a, uh, a mentor match where you, you know, if you want to be mentored, you would submit, okay, here are my needs, my professional development needs. Then there'll be somebody who wants to be a mentor who will list his or her uh, uh, qualifications and we'll try to match you up there. And then I know uh, in talking to several people that uh, they want to be mentored and they also want to mentor somebody else. So they're kind of that in-between generation that, that they, they still recognize they need to be professionally developed, but they're willing to help others become professionally developed. So it's a really looking forward to, to that coming on online. Uh, the the uh, five people you see in the screen below are all on our board of directors. And the uh, second one from the left, uh, the, the shorter one there, she is the, that's Kim Rupert. She's in charge of uh, SAIC's contracting and she is our current national NCMA president. Chapters. Uh, we have 90 chapters all around the country, and we invite you to, you know, if you're not a member of a chapter yet, to get in there, and just by being in the room with other professionals, uh, you're going to not only be helped, but you're in a position to help others. And I always recommend, especially when people are looking for another job, uh, that's where you go because you might just be find yourself sitting next to a hiring professional or a, a hiring official, or you might find somebody else who has just gone through the same thing you've done, and they can give you tips on where are the best jobs boards or some other jobs that maybe have they know they're aware of that are out there. Uh, but they're a great opportunity to go. Uh, first, some chapters offer meals. Uh, Others uh, will have a, uh, a professional develop, development session, maybe 30 minutes or an hour, uh, you know, a guest speaker coming in. Uh, every chapter has its own personality, so you, you might want to scout around on that. And uh, we, we also have a virtual chapter. So if you don't have a chapter near you, uh, you can get with a virtual chapter, and there are some professional development experiences you can uh, uh, get into there. Um, John, we had a, a question from Michelle. Is there a chapter in Alaska? And I am sorry to report that we do not have a chapter in Alaska at this point. But if you're interested in getting one started, send me an email later, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I can tell you uh, that chartering a chapter is, is a, uh, it's a demanding experience, but it's very rewarding. Uh, and and I, I was an NCMA president at one time, and let me get back to that slide. Uh, and that was the most rewarding year of my NCMA lifetime. Uh, I had such a great time, had great people surrounding me, making sure that I wasn't going to screw things up because it was a great chapter. And uh, it was just amazing to watch things come together because Chapters are not only a professional development opportunity, but it's a leadership development opportunity. So uh, when I was a, a chapter president, I was happened to be a, an Air Force captain, and uh, I was able to you know run things, you know make sure things were done. We had all these events going on, uh, and it was just a very rewarding experience for me. And uh, and I would encourage anybody and everybody to get in there. Uh, if you don't want to be chapter president, maybe offer to be a, a chairperson of some type. You know, be in charge of something. And, uh, but but uh, I've always felt that if you're an NCMA member, you know, you show that on your resume, that to me says that you are interested in your professional development. If you are actively engaged in a chapter, that shows me your uh you're interested in the professional development of others. So when I see that you're a chairman or a president of a chapter, uh, that goes a long way to me as a hiring official. That, that is meaningful to me. 
national events. I talked about the uh, start with, starting in the middle one here, and we have another picture of the World Congress at Chicago last year. Uh, but this year, uh, in a couple months, about three months, we'll be going to Cleveland. And uh, so hopefully you uh, have already made your plans to be there. Uh, if you can't make it there, next year we're going to be going to uh, Boston in 2019. And the year after that, we're going to be in Dallas for the World Congress. So these are major events. It's, it lasts about three and a half days. And uh, uh, I highly encourage you, if you can get to them, uh, to get there. Uh, the subcon down here, the logo on the left, we just had that two weeks ago, right, in uh, Dulles. And these are this is geared for uh, subcontractors. And and it was attended, we, we had our highest attendance, there were about 100, over 180 people at that subcon. And so that was a, a record for that event. And we're very proud of that. And we have had high ratings going through the uh, uh, all, ratings for all the instructors and, and the uh, presentations so far. And it's, it's just a series of workshops. So there's no getting into a main banquet hall and, and listening to a presenter and then splitting off. It's, it, you start from minute one going to, to workshops uh, for two days. And it was a great event. And lots of happy people there. And then in uh, December, we're going to have our uh, government contract management symposium uh, that will be in uh, Arlington and that is also a great event we typically have around 400 people attend that one uh, World Congress we we usually swing up around 1500 people to 2000 people so that's a major event but the GCMS uh, that's a great event uh, I would encourage you to come to that that, that is one set up to be like a, a major conference where you do have the keynote speakers and you have breakout sessions and, and so on. So I would, again, if you can make it, uh, please do. And just when you thought things couldn't get better, uh, you can follow NCMA on social media. We've got all of them covered here. So, uh, uh, so you won't miss a thing. Feel confident in your knowledge. Okay, and uh, let's see. And my PowerPoint has stopped working, but uh, but but there are a lot of environmental trends going on. John, why don't we launch another poll right here? Okay, go ahead while I get my uh, PowerPoint back up. Okay. Let's do, I'd like to know how many people on this call today are currently NCMA members. And also, while you're taking that poll, um, Ethan also asked about chapters in Maryland. And the good news is we have multiple chapters in Maryland, uh, multiple in Northern Virginia. There's one in DC. So this area right here in the DMV is very, very active in terms of NCMA members and chapters. So just wanted to throw that out there. It looks like just about everybody has responded. Uh, of 75% are non-members and 25% are. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the presentation about being competent in your job, and there are a lot of environmental factors that are going on. Uh, you know, it, whether you're in government or you're not, uh, there's always some type of budget uncertainty. Uh, you know, if you're in the government, is your job going to be outsourced? You know, all kinds of things going on. Uh, market strategies, if you're a seller, uh, you know, should I protest? If you do protest, how does the buyer respond to the protest? 
if you're in a government contract, is, is are you going to be terminated? What what type of uh, activities are involved in terminations? And of course, jobs. Uh, are you happy in your current job? Is it meaningful to you? What do you want out of your job? And are there other opportunities that might be waiting for you? Hopefully, where you're at now, uh, you can customize that job to fit your your professional needs. What what are you wanting in five years to, to happen? So there are a lot of things going on. And, and uh, the last topic here is listed is cybersecurity. You know, the, you know, here's a a, a link that from one of my, one of my friends they want me to look into it. Should I open that link? Should I open this exe uh, uh, PDF file? You know, that, that kind of thing. So we, we need to be uh, aware of cybersecurity and contract management. And of course, we call them trusted resources. These are all NCMA products here, and I'm going to get into a, a lot of these. Each one of them, most of these have their own separate slide. But the uh, the fourth one down, the salary survey, it says coming soon. Well, it's here now. I got an email this morning, and as uh, as an NCMA member, I can go into the NCMA website, log in, and I can download the entire salary survey, 181 pages. So you can go in there. And so if you are looking for a job, you can see how you rack and stack against your peers, or at least the people who responded to the survey. And there's a lot of interesting information in there. And I'm going to be talking about the, the salary in a, in a slide in, in a few minutes. But it's some great information, a lot of, a lot of great research uh, done in there. But I'll, again, I'll talk to uh, most of these areas in the coming slides. Uh, one thing as a member, you'll be getting our contract management uh, magazine every month. This is, to me, and, and many other people feel the same, the best product that NCMA has going. A uh, lot of great information in there. A uh, lot of great authors who contribute. And uh, the, the particular magazine you see here, this is from December a few months ago. Uh, our editorial staff actually won an award uh, for this particular magazine, so we're quite proud of that. Uh, every month has a different theme. You can see on this particular magazine the legislation and legal issue, and that will be coming. That happens uh, every December. But coming up, we have in September we have the acquisition team. October cost and pricing. November uh, supply chain. And, and so on. This particular month, it's, it's the uh, professional development issue. So we tend to have a different theme. We try to have a different theme every month. And uh, so anyway, that's a very good magazine. Hopefully, uh, as, if you have the inkling to want to write something, you can submit that to our editorial staff and, and you may be selected, become a, a published author. Uh, here's another member benefit. Every two weeks, you'll get uh, CM News. It's a it's an e-news blast, and you'll you'll see what has happened over the past two weeks. We, this is a composite, a a news stream of of everything of significance that's happened in our career field over the past two weeks. And so we'll provide you all the links that if you're interested, you can go uh, check out the entire article on on those. So this is a very informative. Uh, newsletter too. If you like books to hold in your hand, we've got them. Uh, so we have quite a few in our in our bookstore to help enhance your professional library. Down here to the left, you'll see the in the, the gray the larger gray book, uh, the Contract Management Body of Knowledge. That's our our hottest seller right now. That was new as of last summer at the World Congress in Chicago, as a matter of fact. So that is really what we base all of our competencies on, and I'll talk a little bit about that in another slide. But uh, th that is also going to be our first ebook. It'll be a searchable book, uh, and so in a few months that'll be available uh, online. So you'll be able to get it hard copy, and it's 386 pages of fun, and uh, or you can get it through the electronic version. Also, another one that's going to be an ebook. You'll see up in the center right, uh, the desktop guide to basic contract 
contracting terms. Uh, we're going to come out with the eighth edition in a few months, and that one is also going to be an ebook uh, available for you. So, so uh, a lot of good things are trying to to move progress forward in all these. So hopefully these will uh, satisfy that professional development itch that you might have. Webinars. You know, a lot of people have webinars. We, we're quite proud of ours. We have what are called spotlights, where we really focus in on different topics. Right now, we're, we're focused in on, we have several webinars on the contract itself. If you're interested in the federal acquisition regulation, we have several on that. And then we have some on pricing. And if you buy more than two, uh, you'll get a discount. I don't know what those discounts are offhand, but, but uh, I would invite you to go into our website, uh, look at a few, and if they're interested, if you're interested, uh, go ahead and, and uh, participate in those. And that the great thing about our webinars is it's similar to, to what you're in now, but, but uh, uh, you can purchase one webinar but you can have a whole room full of people. So if you if you buy the individual rate of $189 and you've got 10 people in the room, right there you're paying less than $19 per person for an hour and a half of training. And uh, and that that's a great value. So anyway, I invite John, you to, I, to look at our... Can, sure, can I chime ahead, in there um, just for reference? Each webinar is 1.5 CPE credits that's continuing professional education. And Cynthia actually had a question um, regarding continuing education. And I'm gonna unmute you in case you'd like to speak, Cynthia. If the question is about the, the three national events that John was talking about before, they definitely do have lots of CPE credits and it just depends on what you attend at each of those meetings. Um, you know, it could be up to 20 CPE credits if you attend the both days and you go to every session. So it's really up to you what you make of those live events. And the webinars are 1.5 credits each. And what else do we have, John? Oh, the NES, it's the National Education yeah. Seminars. That's something yeah. else you might do for a full day of training and seven, seven credits. Does that answer your question, Cynthia? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, great. Hey, for my my Bob Hartford here, my edification, is a CPE the same thing as a CLP? It is. Uh, at NCMA, we refer to CPEs, and that's what we're measuring for certification. But it. it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, if, if, you, if you see down there at the bottom of the screen it has four and a half in the middle of that seal and then underneath that it says earn up to four and a half CPEs slash CLPs. And, and here is a, another opportunity. Uh, we're very proud of these learning pathways as well. Uh, this is where it's almost like immersion training where we bring you in. Uh, we, we Take you through a course. It's it's a, there's a lot of gamification involved here, so you're you're uh, uh, having a good time while you while you're learning. Uh, hopefully, you, you're going to be learning something, but but uh, you're going to be reading articles. So you actually have access to a subject matter expert who is overseeing you as you progress through the, these uh, courses, and and there there are actually different levels of competency. So, for instance, we have a foundational uh, some foundational path courses like uh, the FAR environment, uh, navigating the solicitation process, and introduction to cost and pricing. The next level of expertise we call the professional path, and we have one course in there, and that's uh, developing a negotiation strategy. And we're, the next level is strategic path, and we're currently developing some courses for that. So we, we just started this last year, and it's come along very well. Uh, those who uh, have participated in it, we've gotten high marks on it, so we're, they're actually encouraging us to build more of these learning pathways. So this is something uh, we're very proud of and, uh, and we, we want to keep expanding. Uh, if you're interested in building a lot of CPEs real fast, uh, this, this is a great way to do it. We have a couple of uh, 
uh, online prep courses for two of our certifications, the Certified Professional Contract Manager and the Certified Federal Contract Manager. Uh, it's a 10-week course, and you can get 40 hours of training over that 10 weeks. Uh, this helps prepare you for these two exams. And I can tell you, as the certification guy at NCMA, those who complete these courses and take them seriously have a very high pass rate as compared to those who don't go through the courses or don't go through a study group at their local chapters. So, uh, and, and also, I, I used to uh, facilitate as a consultant the CPCM online prep course, and we got a lot of feedback saying they're going to recommend, uh, the, the graduates were going to recommend to their organizations to have the organization pay for the course for everybody because it was great refresher information. So even if you have your certifications or if you're not interested in it, uh, these are great training vehicles. Uh, they're, they're asynchronous, meaning you can access them 24 hours a day. You know, there's no set, okay, we're going to meet Wednesday from 7 to 10 kind of thing. Uh, but you are expected to turn in some deliverables every week or every two weeks. And then they release recordings uh, on every week or every two weeks for you to listen to and to respond to. And there is that there are uh, subject matter experts who help guide you through the course for the 10 weeks. And, and NCMA starts these at the beginning of each quarter. So we're in April now, so these two courses have already started. If you're interested in them, there will be one starting up again in July, and then one after that in October. So uh, again, the beginning, the first month of every quarter, NCMA starts one of these. And, uh, and I believe the CPCM just sold out their 75 seats there, and they sold those out. So uh, no, in fact, let me back up. It's 100 seats. And it's 75 for the CFCM. So uh, these are quite popular, and uh, recommend if you if you're interested in those, if you're and if you want to, if you do want to go for your uh, certification, and you need training hours, again, yeah, each one of these courses is valued at 40 hours, and uh, so that should be able to help you quite a bit. Now, we are. Also in the process of building an online prep course for the uh, certified commercial contract manager, the CCCM, and that will be uh, out in October. So we're very excited about that. So uh, that's, again, that's being built right now. Uh, Lucy mentioned the National Education Seminars. These, these are all day Ventures, these are worth seven hours of training. And we you can see here the, the active uh, NESs that we have going on. So if you, uh, you can either ask your chapter to, to uh, sponsor any of these, or you can do it through your organization. Uh, I have taught many NESs at organizations that are nowhere near chapters, or maybe they uh, uh, collaborated with a chapter to help put these on. So there are a lot of ways of doing it. So I would invite you, if you're interested in any of these topics, and there are great descriptions of them out there on, on our website, go out there, look at them. If you're interested, uh, contact us, and we will be able to, uh, we'll be happy to help you uh, set these up. Uh, workforce development and competence. This is uh, really what my job is all about. Uh, I'm the standards and certification geek for NCMA. Uh, over on the left-hand side, uh, we at NCMA are able to control how competencies are developed. Uh, a couple years ago, we developed what we call the contract management standard. And this is a consensus-based document that we, the way we developed this was through a, uh, a survey of contract managers then we had some experts draft up, you know, we put all these job tasks into different buckets. We came up with competencies. We had uh, a public review, public comment, and we incorporated all that. And this standard, and I'll show you on the next slide how it's broken out, but it's available to you whether you're a member or not at no cost. 
it's out there on our website, including the cover page, which you see here, is it's 11 pages long. And I would recommend you uh, going out there, downloading it, and uh, having it because it, it will be very useful uh, in helping to develop your any training programs, if you're trying to develop a position description, if you just want to figure out what your job is, uh, whether you're a buyer or a seller, this standard uh, should be able to help you. Uh, going to the right, you, uh, you've got the, the SIMBOC, the Contract Management Body of Knowledge, which I mentioned before, but the SIMBOC expands and builds upon the standard. So all those competencies that are in the 11 page uh, contract management are expanded into a book that's almost 400 pages long and there's a lot of uh, a review of the literature in the SIMBOC that will help explain what we expect of contract managers and how they perform their job. Now again as I mentioned we NCMA can control how the competencies are developed at the beginning. If you go to the extreme right there, you'll see all of our certifications listed. We control how the, your knowledge of those competencies are tested. So we can control both ends, and in the middle, we can influence how education, training, and work experience are developed. And just not coincidentally, those three areas are the requirements that you have to meet in order to sit for our exams. So we want to be able to influence uh, college curricula, uh, training programs, and your work experience. And, and we are actively doing that. There are people who have gotten this, this SIMBOC and they, have, they are building courses based on what they see in, in the SIMBOC. They are developing their training based on what they see in the SIMBOC. They are developing their position descriptions based on, and their offices, uh, based on what they see in the SIMBOC. So we are able to influence uh, the career field in that manner, and we're very proud of that. Uh, coming up soon is, and there's another slide on this, but we intend to ANSI accredit our standard, our SIMBOC, and our certification program to make them much tighter. And again, more, more on that here in a, a couple slides. But this is the standard, and down at the bottom you can see the website. You can go in there again. Uh, this is for anybody who is interested. Uh, and we're not going to ask you for your email address. We're not going to pester you. It's just a free download. So I'd encourage you to go to the site there and, uh, and pull it down. But you'll see the job task involved in uh, starting at 2.0, the pre-award, award, and post-award. Uh, life cycles, and you'll also, under guiding principles, these are the areas that impact all the life cycles. So you can't just have skills and roles in one area. You can't just have standards of conduct in one of the life cycles. They they permeate all the way through the entire life cycle, all the way through closeout. So you know, even as an example, in pre-award, if you go down to the first uh, 2.1 develop solicitation, that's primarily a buyer's competency. And in response to the uh, requesting offers, the seller is going to develop an offer based on what they see in 2.2. Then they're going to get together the next one in 3.1 and form the contract, and you'll see the uh, competencies there for that. Then you get into the post-award, and of course we want contract performance. And then of course, very important is the contract closeout. So what you do in acquisition planning and developing your uh, offer, you need to keep the end in mind. The end in mind is not the award, it's the contract closeout. So uh, we're very proud of this, and, and again, we're gonna be taking this through the ANSI process uh, to help solidify what we have uh, going on here. This is the, uh, the SIMBOC. And if you see the competencies down listed below, and uh, three, four, five, and six are straight from the uh, standard. And that's, those are the technical aspects of this career field. As a contract manager, we also expect you to go through 1.0 leadership. 
you need to have competencies in 2.0 management and in 7.0 your ability to learn so uh, that that is really what the career field is about learning and that's what NCMA is here to do to help you learn so uh, th this this is again we'll we're going to be uh, getting this thing uh, ANSI accredited as well. And speak of the devil, here it is. As of this past December, NCMA became an organizational member of the American National Standards Institute. Now ANSI is the only American representative for the International Standards Organization (ISO). So we're we're uh, we're playing with the with the big boys and girls here. Now, as of last Friday, April twentieth, NCMA became an accredited standards developer. What we did here, what this means is we submitted what we propose as our uh, processes to develop a standard, and and ANSI went through their long process of of uh, putting it out on their website for a public comment. It went to a subcommittee for review, and we received comments there. Then it went to the full executive committee, and they approved us as uh, an accredited standards developer. So we will be starting the process very soon of sending out a survey and analyzing that. So hopefully uh, all of you will get that survey. If you don't get it uh, within a, uh, a month or so, please contact me. I'll send you the link. You don't have to be an NCMA member. Uh, to uh, participate in this survey. We would like you to, to help us out on this. And we hope that by the end of the year, the standard will be ANSI accredited. And then we're going to move to the SIMBOC, and then we're going to, uh, like, I like I mentioned before, go for the certification program. So prove yourself. So what is the value? Again, keep the constant theme. You know, we, we can do all this stuff with ANSI and certification, all this stuff, but it's the people that makes being a being part of NCMA so valuable. And you can see just based on this page, pie chart here that when you consider the uh, members' experience in contract management, you know, we, it's pretty much equally divided in these four quarters, these four areas. So we have a, a widespread of people uh, involved here. Uh, John, this would be a, a perfect spot for our next poll. Um, let's see yeah, go ahead. Yeah. how split up our current audience is in terms of experience. So here you go. I'd say we have a pretty good mix on the line as well. Um, yeah. Looking like more people with over 10, but everybody is represented here. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, about 60% under 10, 40% over. So, okay. Very interesting. Okay. And we might have some stuff of interest for, uh, for you youngsters out there coming up. And uh, this is Carly Cox. She's another board member. And, you know, she, she gives a great testimonial here. But uh, I've known Carly for, for several years. And I can tell you, uh, she is exactly what NCMA is all about. She came in, you know, when she got out of college, she started as an administrative assistant. She found NCMA, became actively engaged in her chapter. She's at the Dayton chapter in Ohio. And she rose to become chapter president. She was selected for our contract management leadership development program. While she was in that program, she became certified as a certified federal contract manager. Shortly after she graduated the program, she uh, <clears throat> did enough to become an NCMA fellow. Uh, and what she has done with her chapter, a lot of people, once they become president, they kind of bow out. She quickly turned around and she was actively engaged in study groups to
to help other people become certified. So Carly represents uh, the, the younger generation who are doing, who is doing everything right, not only for herself in this case, but in helping others become proficient. And like I said, she's on the board of directors. She's very active, and uh, and I'm uh, quite proud to to know Carly. And here's the uh, contract management leadership development program I had mentioned. Uh, the period of applications uh, is coming up very soon uh, between May 1st and the end of June. Uh, they'll all be due uh, at the end of June. But but uh, if you're interested in this, first off, it's tuition free. Uh, you do not pay NCMA anything. We, we, the only thing we require of you is that you be an NCMA member at the time of your uh, when you submit your application. So so you'll have to pay that expense. But uh, typically, we have about 20 people in the class. Uh, there is a program manager or a coach uh, who will take you through this. And and actually, it's like a dream come true for me. Starting this coming program year, we're going to have a CMLDP graduate actually lead the program. And that's uh, going to be uh, phenomenal. If any of you know Landon Hill uh, in Tennessee, he, uh, he's going to be phenomenal. But you, you get selected to this class, you get 180 hours of training through the entire year. During that year, you're going to have two mentors assigned to you to help you progress. And you're going to be developing goals. You can come in and you can either say, I, I have both of my mentors selected, or really what I've seen is be the most successful is to allow the program manager to assign mentors to you and make that match. And uh, th that has always been helpful. And, and it's possible you may never physically meet your mentor. It'd be a lot of online, a lot of phone calls, uh, just, but you need to develop a routine to make sure that you are uh, meeting your goals as you go through the year. And this, that, that is one thing you're gonna be uh, assessed on, is you, there's gonna be a periodic review, uh, typically three times through the year, Okay, where do you stand on meeting your goals, and uh, and how do you intend to course correct or uh, whatever? So you need to give an explanation as to why you are where you are in your professional development. Uh, you're also going to have a research paper that you you need to submit, and that'll usually be toward the end of uh, March. You'll graduate at the World Congress. So if you get your application submitted by the end of June, the selection typically occurs at the World Congress. So you'll know shortly afterwards, uh, usually the, the end of July, beginning of August. And uh, so, it, so I mentioned it's tuition free to NCMA. You still need to figure out how you're going to travel. So there's still travel expenses you, you will be responsible for. And uh, I've seen a lot of students who will work with their bosses. Sometimes their bosses are able to pay the full freight and that, that's great. Uh, other times you might need to work a deal, say, tell your boss, okay, if you, if you pay for the Boston trip uh, next year when I graduate, uh, and, and if you live in the DC area, you can say, okay, I'll cover the, the two events that, that I have to attend here, uh, the subcon and the, uh, the GCMS. So there are a lot of ways of working this. And in the application, there is a worksheet so you can uh, develop your expense sheet and then go to your boss and see if you can get some support. Sometimes your chapters will help you too. So there are a lot of ways of getting help. I have also seen where students will self-fund. They'll pay their entire way. Uh, usually they have a lot of uh, points at hotels or airline. Uh, but they usually figure out a way of getting it done. But right now, there are almost 250 graduates of the program, and they, there is an alumni association, and they typically meet at every World Congress, just get together. Uh, but they're always doing something. There's an online uh, community for them, and they're, they are very active. So I, and, and I've often seen where if somebody's looking for a job, another graduate will help that person get a job. Uh, 
Uh, so it's it's remarkable how they've all come together. So uh, and most of the people have been either at the time they submit an application or even later will become a an officer of their local chapter. It's, that's not required, but uh, it, it is encouraged uh, for you to participate in your chapter. So if any of you are interested in the uh, CMLDP, uh, again, be on the lookout for that uh, application and because it, it could take a while to, to fill out and especially to get uh, funding support from your boss or, or somewhere. Here's a, a graduate from the 2015 class, and I really like his uh, testimonial here, where he talks about a year of intensified professional development provided the opportunity to make vital relationships with people having similar career interests, but whose backgrounds and experiences are different from mine. So there's a lot of commonality in the problems and the issues that you face, but you, but you're you're facing those with other people who who have different backgrounds and can actually help you learn and see different perspectives. So uh, Raymond here is, is uh, he, he was one of the speakers up on the, uh, at the World Congress last year in Chicago, and he just did a phenomenal job. We do have uh, certification programs. I need to, I see we're closing in here. Uh, the CPCM, that's based on that contract management body of knowledge. The CFCM is based on the FAR. The CCCM is based on the Uniform Commercial Code. Currently, the CCCM is based on Articles 1, 2, and 2A. July 2nd, it's going to cover all 11 articles of the UCC. Uh, your undergraduate degree needs to be from a regionally accredited uh, school or college. Uh, if you're going for the CFCM or CCCM, we do give a waiver if you have 10 or more years work experience in the career field. So, uh, uh, and you'll see the requirements for the training hours, 120 for the CPCM, 80 for the others. And you need five years experience for the CPCM and one year each for the, uh, for the other two. If you have any questions on these, please feel free to, to contact me. I'll be happy to, to help you out on that. This is the uh, salary survey I was talking to you about. You can see the top line there. That's the CPCM. It, it, from the beginning of time when we started doing these salary surveys in 2005, the CPCM has always ranked higher. Uh, the, the dotted dash line under that, that's level three, if you're familiar with that, for DEWIA and FACC, they come in next highest. And then you have that purple line, which is the CFCM. Something of note that, that I've seen from the beginning when I started following these things is that uh, those who have a level two in federal contracting, they earn no more than somebody who has no certification at all. The difference between NCMA certifications and the federal certifications is that the federal is mandatory. You must have those certifications in order to to uh, stay in the career field. The only way you stand out in federal is if you do not have one of those certifications, whereas NCMA certifications are optional. And so the, uh, people just feel that these optional certifications are just part of their professional development and professional growth. So when you see certifications in that light, the, the salary and the level of responsibility tend to be trailing uh, tend to just come to you. And th those are the trailing indicators of your professional development. We do have awards and honors. Uh, I jump in here for a moment. I know we are at three o'clock, but I really wanted to um, get to a good question here from the other John, who wants to hear more about um, whether or not NTMA is heavily DOD focused. And he's wondering what the percentage of DOD is compared to civilian federal that's on our, our pie chart of who NCMA members are. And I, I'm sure we don't have that exact number, but um, can you talk to John on that, on whether or not NCMA is DOD focused? It, it, well, I can tell you that we, we had a logo. It started off being extremely DOD focused. Uh, the logo that we had until about 10 years ago had 
a, a figure of the Pentagon in it. So that's how DOD focused it is. Now we still have a large number of DOD members, uh, but but we are uh, reaching out to more people and uh, more contract managers. So so there is a definitely a place, and and in fact, when you see the uh, CFCM based on the FAR and and others, that's it's based at the top level of FAR. It's not it doesn't go down to the DOD supplement or any other supplement. So so there there is definitely a place still a place for DOD folks, but also for everybody, and uh, including the civilian agencies and the, the people who sell to them. So uh, if, if you, John, if you have any more questions on that, uh, when we get to the side, please please feel free to, to contact me. I'll be happy to, uh, to to get into that more, and I can probably get, get more information based on the uh, membership surveys that we send out every year. So if you want exact numbers, I can get that for you. And uh, thank you, John. And there's, yes. there's another really good one here um, from Kiana. Right. She wants to know uh, how NCMA certification compares to FACC. Uh, FACC is uh, it's great training. Uh, and, and you again, you need that in order to stay in the profession. But I can tell you when you leave federal government, you are no longer certified. That disappears. With NCMA certifications, they are transferable as long as you continue to meet the requirements for the certification, meaning that when you recertify, you have to have 60 hours of training over a five-year period. So uh, the, by OPM's definition, uh, the DEWIA and FACC certifications are really not actual certifications. They are certificate programs. And uh, there's a huge distinction between a certificate and a certification. And, uh, and so it just, just, uh, it's just one of those things that, that uh, you know, again, great training, but the only thing that the uh, federal certifications would apply to NCMA certifications would be the number of CPEs. Because uh, you would need at least an undergraduate degree for NCMA certifications, and you would need, uh, for the work experience, you still have to have that for federal, but but there's a huge uh, distinction. And we, and of course, NCMA has the exam that you, has to, you have to pass. For the CPCM, it's 180 questions, and for the other two, CFCM and CCCM, there are 150 questions, uh, and they're all four hours. You get four hours uh, to take those. John, but, but again, the, the key the key is the, the key is that once you leave federal service, you know you are no longer certified by DEWIA or FACSI. And just a, a comment here from Nicole. Um, Nicole thinks that a CPCM certification is much more difficult to obtain than DEWIA or FACSI. So that might tell you a little bit about how uh, prestigious the CPCM actually is. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. The the CPCM exam has scenario questions in there, uh, which the others don't, but they're all multiple choice. And, and you need to understand the competencies of contract management. You need to understand pre-award, award, post-award, post whether you're a buyer or a seller. Uh, and, and that's so, so if you're a buyer, you need to understand the seller competency. If you're a seller, you need to understand the buyer competency for the CPCM. So, yeah, that, that that's a great point on that. Uh, on that, that exam. And Nicole says it's the hardest exam she ever took, but she is currently an <laughs> NCMA CPCM, so. Okay, that's great, crazy. that's cool. great to hear, yeah. And uh, and you can see here, we, we, we do have a board of advisors uh, up here in the top left, and, and they are quite happy to provide all the advice we want. We use them uh, as much as we can when we want some advice. Uh, down below, uh, you can see our board of directors, and as we introduced her earlier, we, we could see, you can see right here, uh, this is Carly, always happy. Over here is Dave Gregan, we met, met him too. He doesn't look so happy here, but he's happy on the inside where it counts. But uh, as I mentioned, Carly was a CMLDP grad. Uh, this young lady, Allie. Sarah and Heather are all CMLDP graduates. 
And I can also tell you that we have a really good mix uh, because this guy right here, uh, Dick Jenman, he is a retired two-star admiral who uh, was also the director of the Defense Procurement and Acquisition Policy, uh, DPAP. Uh, and if you don't like straightforward and honest feedback, Dick is not the guy to talk to. Uh, but I, I love the guy. He helped me quite a bit as we were putting together the standard and the Simbach. Uh, the key to Dick is, is uh, talk to him about his grandkids first to soften him up a little bit, and then he'll, he'll help you out. But here's uh, Kim Rupert. I mentioned she's our current president. Uh, she's in charge of SEIC contracting. Uh, Terry Rainey, uh, he just retired from uh, CACI. He was in charge of their contracting. Uh, he's the past president. And then the incoming president is Charlie Williams, who used to be uh, the head of the Defense Contract Management uh, Agency or Command. So we have quite a variety of federal, uh, commercial, uh, sellers, buyers throughout the board of directors, and uh, and they do a great job. Um, Susan, you had your hand up, and I'm sorry, I made that go away somehow, um, but I, I don't appear to be able to unmute you. If you can type a question into the question pod, I'd be happy to read that out for you. <laughs> And while we're waiting for that, uh, here is my contact information. Again, feel free to contact me on anything at any time. I'm not going to follow up and pester you, even if it's just to say, you know, where is that standard at so I can download it. Uh, if you need any other information, be happy to help you uh, uh, with anything. And John, we'll distribute this PowerPoint deck uh, to them. We'll send it. Okay. Why don't we do that, huh? Send it to the people That's who out. registered. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I'll throw in one comment on the uh, DOD focus at the NCMA. Uh, in a Potomac way, we rented a booth at the NCMA World Congress for the last four. And I, I haven't, you know, it, it, it seems, well, I can just tell you from my experience, uh, it's you get a wide variety of everybody. So you get DOD, you get civilian, and of course you get commercial. So that's been my honest experience is it's a scatter, scatter shot from across the board uh, when you're sitting at a booth uh, talking to people. Yeah, and, and the amazing thing is if, if you sit and talk to people who are like you, you're not going to learn all that much. It's finding those others who have different perspectives. Uh, so if you are in DOD, you know, if you can find somebody from the VA or agriculture or even somebody who sells to them or somebody who is in local government, uh, it's amazing how the world just seems to open up to you when you talk to other people and you think, well, I didn't think we could do that. Well, yes, you can uh, because other people are doing it. So take advantage of that networking, that collaboration, uh, working with other people. That's huge. Yeah, did we get the uh, question in? I did, and Bob. Oh, just how we get the seal piece of it? Hey, Susan, uh, we're going to send out a training certificate uh, later today. So we do combine that. We have, that's something called a go-to webinar interest rating. If you answer the poll questions and you kept that go-to webinar screen up on your main screen, uh, and of course you attended as you have, uh, it, should, it will not be an issue. But we send out a training certificate later today for that one CLP. Stay tuned. And Bob, I also wanted to mention that down in the chat area, if everyone can see that, I did um, send out some links based on items that John was talking about. So feel free to click through and get some more information from our website. Great. Hey, uh, John and Lucy, thanks very much. That was exactly what, what I was hoping for. Uh, I, I, I'm certain everyone got a lot out of it. So, hey, let's do this, uh, how about once a year? Uh, I will be in touch next spring, and hopefully we can do it again. Sounds great. Sounds great to me. All right. Any uh, final Thank questions? Thank you. Appreciate it. There?